how uh, much of a clusterfuck this is going to be, but let's give it a try. Okay. I guess I'm streaming. You are live, it says. I can see that I have audio by my OBS. Indicators. Sorry about all this. I have never done this before. Check one, two, three. Audio appears to be good. All right. Okay, this is going to be about using Rosetta with BeatMaker 3. The output of Rosetta is not readily recordable in BeatMaker 3, meaning that you can't put it on the same channel, same track, and uh, have it be recorded. You have to send it to the track, and you have to do a couple things, or, or one of two things to do that. So right now, let's go to BeatMaker. Let's start a new session. What I'm going to do is the other other aspect of this is also using audio layer. Audio layer is probably the best sampler as far as um, features go. I mean, the sampler in Beatmaker is excellent, but uh, as far as multi-layer, round robin, uh, velocity, and certain other aspects um, audio layer is a little better for that so that's why I'm trying to use it with Beatmaker because I like the interface that Beatmaker has for the pads and uh, the wheels the scales the triggers and rules and all that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna load audio layer into a uh, bank uh, no, over here okay and now we're gonna use the audio unit And I have a Billy Cobham drum kit, which is sampled also by using the new audio layer uh, automatic sampling with MIDI, which is a great feature as well. Okay, we've got that. Now, as you know, if I go to the audio layer bank, and try to add an, a, a Rosetta as a MIDI effect. It will work, but it won't be recorded. So to record it, you have to send it there. So we'll start another um, layer. Uh, another uh, bank, and we will add Rosetta. Let's use Rosetta Rhythm. Now to get it from here to the other track, we have to add something like MIDI root, or you could also use as a bank plugin, which is also very helpful because it gives you control of the pads without having an actual sound uh, loaded, is M route MIDI. So I'm going to load that too because I want to use these pads. The setup is very simple. If you want to use this to send MIDI from this track to Beatmaker, you do it through this selector, and then you choose a MIDI channel. That way you can use it uh, multi in multiple instances, and you can send it different channels on different tracks. Right now, I'm not really going to use this because I just want the use of the pads. We're going to try, first of all, using... MIDI root, which is set to beat maker on one. Now we go to our audio layer bank and we set the MIDI receive to channel one and all. Because for some reason, I don't know if it's ever worked for you, but whenever I select individual inputs, they don't work. You just always have to select all. I'm not really sure why that is. So now theoretically, yeah, theoretically I can play into, oh, wait a minute, no, let's go to route MIDI, I should be able to play from here, oh, we have to set the MIDI output, right, MIDI setup, MIDI out, all, right, destination beat maker, MIDI setup, MIDI output, port, all, channel, one. Okay, 
as we can see, it's not going to A. Let's make sure it, bank A. The banks, banks uh, as you'll notice, are selected independently on these screens. You can have a different bank for your pads and a different bank for the um, MIDI effects and the audio effects. So that can be confusing if you think you're changing the bank and you're also changing the uh, input area. So try to be careful of that. Uh, so we're on audio layer now, and we should say, what did I say? Let's see, MIDI setup, all one. Okay, why doesn't it see it? One. This should be flashing. If I set up Rosetta to generate again, and then let's just put it on a loop. We have a loop. Well, it is working, isn't it? Let's go to, yep, yeah. okay, all right. So the problem there is, I can't use the pad on the Rosetta track to trigger audio layer, apparently under any circumstance, but if I recall, oh, well, now it works. Okay. I don't know if you saw what I did there. Oh, you have to take Rosetta out of the chain, which is okay, because I'll, 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 I'll explain that to you too here. Because now that we have control over the recording track, which is A1 that has the audio layer in it, when we go to this track, oh look, they changed together. Oh, that's because I'm not in MIDI. Um, you can see if we put Rosetta in, we can use Rosetta and multiple instances of Rosetta, which is also fun, which I'll show you. We can use multiple instances of Rosetta Send them to track one for recording. And then if you take those multiple instances out, you can play over the top of what you've laid down for fills and for adjustments and uh, you know additional embellishments, which is nice. But for now, let's just use this simple one instance setup. But if we're, if we're gonna start building on more Rosetta instances, we can use this for just the bass drum, say. As you can see, it's in the wrong general. It's supposed to be general MIDI. What happened to my volume? Uh, okay. Yes. Wow. Okay, that's another thing. I think within Rosetta, you can also set up the upper and lower limits in the dynamics. My lower limit is too low, and I have to fix that within uh, audio layer. So let's get the lower limit out of the gutter. We'll put the upper limit for accents at 127. I'm not going to use any variation right now. So now, because as you can hear, if there if there are accents involved, you can hear it now. Okay, so we've got this as the bass drum. You could also, I mean, you know, to make these interesting, you could put it on mutate. Now you've got your, your, your like, auto bass drum happening. Then you can also add another instance of Rosetta Rhythm. You'll have to add another MIDI route, MIDI route. It's already set up properly. This one we can use for the snare. Let's 
this as another. General MIDI patch. What can we make this? Hi hats. Okay, let's make these hi hats. So, as you can see, kind of building up a groove here. And if we go back and look here, it's going to, it's being sent to A1. So now, if we record, we should get that on one, recorded as it's played. Oh wait, let's make sure it's in, oh it is, sorry. There you have it. Now, to, to listen back to this, there isn't an easy way to mute these. I don't think. There isn't a master mute. Um, the audio mute doesn't, doesn't mute the MIDI. So if you don't want these double playing, and you don't, you're going to have to at least take out one instance of each thing, each thing. You could take the MIDI root out, or you could take the Rosetta. The Rosetta is a little easier to read as you scoot down the line here. So now... We play this back, and you have it sent to the track because there's nothing there. This is not Rosetta playing. This was the recorded performance. So now you have like a basis for your groove, and you can build on it if you go to Heads. Of course, the great thing about Beatmaker that no other, not, not even um, that Elliott Garage thing. I can't think of the name of it. Nobody wants to do these. Do the exact same thing we have here with Beatmaker, with with something like this. This is just really. Just really so helpful. So if I want to add that, just go back, put it in record. What am I, sixteenths? Yeah. So see, to me, this is a. Uh, this is enough for me to work with Beatmaker right here. I've been trying all these other software, I mean, all the other, other iOS DAWs, and there's always something that you can't get. So, But for creating, uh, this is a big plus for me because I'm a real drums kind of guy. And uh, since I can use audio layer without it crashing all the time, uh, and I have so much control over the way the samples work for dynamic reasons, which is another thing that the um, Elliott Garage thing still doesn't have is dynamic layers. And for real drums, uh, for what I'm trying to do, which apparently isn't really very popular anymore, is to try to capture a real performance and try to make it sound as much like a real drummer as possible. And to accomplish that, you need multi-layer uh, recordings of sampled parts of the drum. And they need to... to uh, they need to be able to fade into the next one seamlessly over different uh, adjustable velocity layers. And the addition of round robin capabilities for those also is, is really uh, an addition, a, a great addition to that because you have left and right hand stroke uh, differences and it helps to take away the mechanical feel of it. So anyway, um, this is just to, just to show you uh, something you may or may not want to use for your projects. This is something I'm glad I figured out. A nice thing too about Beatmaker is how many of these things you can load up. Oh, also let's look at the, um, let's look at the CPU because this doesn't really, this is really a, not a CPU intensive 
setup. Let's take this out and go back and reinitialize and watch and see how the uh, how the CPU is utilized for. See now this happens sometimes. As you can see, I'm here and this just just doesn't want to move. So I guess you have to. Uh, hmm. This is just one of those things, I guess. Yeah, there we go. All right. So let's put these back in. Is that everybody? Yeah. So it's thinking. The CPU is, what, peaking out at about 10%, 21 at rare occasions. I'm not really sure why. It could be the loop recycle. Let's load it up real heavy and see what we get. Let's just put random shit on everything. So we'll go here and we'll go to MIDI effects. MIDI effects. Okay, and we'll go here and we'll go random. Let's do the next one. low tones in there. Alright, that's everybody cranking along. Let's go look at the uh, CPU. Basically the same, which is pretty impressive, to me anyway. And again, we can record that. making sure that we don't have Rosetta clashing with it. Let me make sure there's nothing going on in there. Nope. Okay, let's bring this back over. And again, like I said, you can overdub should be recorded and we don't have anything to turn off because we weren't using Rosetta. Okay, see, to me, this is really a, a, a fantastic uh, capability. You could accomplish similar to this if you had the pad interface as a separate unit, but no one makes a pad interface exactly like the Beatmaker one. There's something missing. Either you can't just put your finger on it with one finger and have it trigger at the same time, or you can't and you can't re reassign it to the next piece simply and easily as it's in record. I don't know. There's always something. So anyway, uh, I hope this has been uh, somewhat interesting. I'm sorry it was so long, and I hope you find some useful information in it. So until next time, stay safe.